Hello! So they just launched the new Asgard system in this game. As you can see, they totally changed the whole uh, guild city menu. You have Asgard here, like all the old stuff's here, here, but it's arranged very differently. So it's kind of a mess. I mean, it's a bit, it's gonna take some getting used to. So the guild island, so now you just have the dungeon, the circle of summoning, merchant titans, uh, titan valleys up here. This menu looks the same once you get into it. Same with sanctuary. Same with guild wars. Those all look the same. Uh, and then you have the new Asgard menu. Asgard, you have guild raid. You just joined the guild, guild raids with all the five days. Uh, <laughs> I actually did not join this guild. I founded this guild like over two years ago, but thank you. <laughs> oh wait, there's an info scene here. We can read this. Battle of the bosses minions Monday through Thursday. Earn valor emblems and boost guild morale. Exchange valor emblems for hero buffs. Defeat the boss together. Available Monday Friday through Sunday. This is available Monday through Thursday. I'll learn more. Guild raid. In this game mode, you battle powerful bosses and their minions alongside your guildmates. Top players and guilds will compete in crossover rankings and may even make history by entering the Hall of Fame. Two phases. The guild raid. The last one we can consist of two phases. In phase one, you battle the boss's minions. The this phase begins on Monday and ends on Thursday. Progress and minion boss calculated differently for all players, but the difficulty is the same for all guild members. Uh, plays two is unlocked on Friday. Introduces the boss. Each guild member can participate in the boss fight to detract from the boss shared health pool. Minions are battle nodes on the boss map. Depending on the mode node, you will need to battle one, two, or three enemy teams to battle the minions, receive valor emblems, increase your guild's morale, a temporary score that is reset at the end of the week. Minion nodes are unlocked over the week with five nodes being unlocked on Monday, two on Tuesday, etc. The number of attack attempts in the same is the same as the number of minion mode nodes. The daily number of attempts you receive is equal to the number of nodes that are unlocked on that day. Valor emblems in the buff shop. Emblems are a currency you can exchange for buffs in the raids. Buff shop. Buffs boost you in battles with the minions and the boss. At the end of the week, all buffs are reset. The number of emblems received and boss tiers available in the shop depend on the boss's level. At the start of the week, higher level boss unlock better buffs. The shop's assortment is subject to minor random change of the week's buffs obtained from the shop only affect the player who purchased them. Guild morale is a damage boost that is only active in boss fights. Guild morale affects all guild members. The emblems earned by each guild members are counted towards the total guild morale. Higher morale means that each guild member deals that much more damage to the boss. You can attack the boss starting on Friday in game time. You only have five attack temps and only each hero can only be used once per week. Boss level. Once the boss is defeated, they are revived at a higher level. Nonetheless, each guild member can then claim a reward for the defeated boss's level. If the guild defeated max level boss, they are revived at the same level instead. Rewards. By participating in guild raid battles, you obtain resource for hero ascension. These resources can be earned by attacking minions, dealing damage to the boss as well as guild victories against the boss. Weekly cycle. The guild raid progress is reset at the end of the week. The guild master, general, or officer can select the guild raid level for the next week before it begins. The highest level at which the guild defeats the boss will be selected by the default. If the guild does not battle that boss yet, the lowest available level will be selected instead. The selected level also determines the levels of the boss and minions. So... That's how, how that works. Um, so you have the Great Tree of Wisdom. This is where you get the different branches. So you have the Mage Roll branch. as Health, Magic Attack, Armor, Magic Defense, Magic Penetration. Uh, Tink Roll. This is Health, Physical Attack, Magic Attack, Armor, Magic Defense. Marksman. Health, Physical Attack, Armor, Magic Defense, Magic Penetration. Healer, there's only four stats here. Health, magic attack, armor, magic defense. Support roll, health, physical attack, magic attack, armor, magic defense. Warrior, health, physical attack, armor, magic defense, armor penetration. Control roll branch, health, physical attack, magic attack, armor, magic defense. So all of these add health. Right, a lot of people I think were saying like the mage is gonna be the best, like you know, especially if like yo, know, because there's the most heroes here, and that might be true. But these add health, and as I've kind of talked about in other videos, health is not always the best stat to raise. It's kind of a downside. It's the reason I have max Lars. So for a lot of these, I honestly I'm not sure how good these things are because you don't want to do too many raises. Like you could probably do that first level to raise magic attack, no issues. But I don't know like, how good these will be. Whereas the tank, like, you can't go too wrong with the tank because you always want more health on your tanks. So this one is probably the one I would do first for most people because, I mean, everyone, you're probably using, unless you're, like, using 
and var yourself for tanks, then you might need to do uh, the support one. I mean, Isaac doesn't do bad with health. Like, you could probably do support, because I think most of these heroes are okay with more health. Because these are, like I said, maybe Nebula, but she, now she has dodge. Like, so, yeah, these are, like, you could probably do health on support as well. So, that's probably fine. But a lot of these, like, a lot of the times these physical attackers, you kind of want them to have low health. So, I don't know about if freezing all their health slot is going to help them or not. I mean, magic penetration and stuff, like, penetration stats and stuff are good. But uh, this uh, we'll have to see like more like what these stats do. So this is could be good or bad. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, you have Ascension Spire. So this is where you get the different ascensions. So you have different ascension trees. Can you? Oh, you can look at the different things. You can actually see everything this does. So that's magic plus three thirty. So they don't, she does, I said, it's so only certain heroes get skill upgrades, like the seven we talked about, like, they're in the tree just for, I think, completely saved, like, hey, it all leaves it open if they want to add this stuff later, but they're going to use this for balancing, I think, so only certain heroes get a skill upgrade, like Thea gets one, but uh, only seven heroes get one, there's, like I said, like that video I did about all ascension abilities, there's only a few heroes who get new ascension abilities, so keep that in mind, like I said, notice how hers, her second and fifth one are, have a blue icon, Right, whereas all these other heroes are just orange all throughout because they don't have essential abilities. And that's just to let you know these these heroes with blue ones do. But you can kind of see their stats here. Like, let's go look at Aurora. So the first one is 500 health, then magic attack plus 100, dodge plus 60, magic penetration plus 300, health plus 5,000, more dodge, whoa, 190 dodge, magic penetration of 90, like, wow, strength 70, magic attack, Yes, I said, and I don't think Aurora is going to get a lot of, uh, kind of like they call, say, a peripheral stats. Like a lot of, like, say, she's not going to get any armor or magic defense, I don't think. Like, we saw, like, a stat list. There was, like, someone put up a stat chart, like, on a, in a Discord or something a while back. Like, Aurora is, like, see, she gets just mostly, like I said, the only mitigation stats she's getting is dodge, which is really all she needs. But, uh, you have, and again, you don't necessarily, looks like you can actually skip some of these branches. Like, for whatever reason you want to skip this health one, you can, which, like, if you could do that on some of these magic attackers, this might be a good thing. Like, you're definitely going to want, uh, the intelligence on your magic attackers, but you can actually skip, I think you could skip that. Uh, if Celeste has low health, you could probably, you probably want health on Celeste, but... Let's look at Lars here. Well, there's no skipping that thousand health. Ugh, all the ones you want are kind of like, it looks like you're, all the health in the middle. Eh. Okay, that health on the side, that's 13,000. So you can skip that one on Lars, but that's good. Actually, it's 13,000 one is off to the side. So you could probably skip that one. If that's my understanding, my understanding is you have to kind of do a pathway. It's kind of like the Chris Daria. If you ever played Final Fantasy uh, 13, Kind of reminds me of the Krista Arium system, or whatever they call you to pronounce it. Okay, it looks like most of the largest health gains on Lars are actually off to the side. Uh, you miss out some magic penetration, but you can skip that one and just miss out last magic penetration. So, I think you can skip a lot of the bigger health gains on Lars. So, that might be worth it, but, uh, yeah, just kind of saying, I'm very, like, at risk, like I said, health adverse can be, i just very health adverse, and... Oh, hey, there's also an info here. Ascension. Get Ascension resource by defeating boss or acquiring from the Astral Seer. Unlock Ascension glyphs to increase hero stats. Unlock skill buffs on Ascension ranks 2 and 5. And... Okay. So, and then you got... So, let's go back. To, sorry, sorry. We have one more thing to look at. The Astral Seer. So, you can get 7 free ones. I don't know if this is once a day or once a week. I'm not sure, but this resets in four hours, so daily double. So I guess if you get any of these ones, these ones are doubled. And the grand prize is 10 of these. So of my guild already opened up at 10 times. And you could buy apparently more of these for 3,000. So uh, don't, like I said, if you still have some Spooky Fest quests to get for spending emeralds, it's okay to open these. But uh, I'd wait till uh, they said on. So there's going to be a big week-long event. For uh, Asgard launch, so I would wait till then to do most of your spending. Uh, that's you need a hundred. The spending quest goes up to hundred k, so probably don't want to do too many. But we'll probably do an open ten here just for the video. But let's open the free ones first. Let's see what we get. 
We get some strength crystals. Wow, now there's more strength crystals. Kindness insignia. Oh, support roll. I guess they're for different roles. Agility crystal. So these are for heroes with the primary stat of agility. More agility crystals. Wow, more string crystals. We could dump them all in Aurora. <laughs> Here we go. More stuff for Aurora. So let's do it 10 times. Oh, it looks like one times is 350. Oh, we yeah, have available for free. So these are daily. So I think you just get one free one per day and you can have up to seven. Uh, but yeah, so make sure you claim your free ones every day and uh, we're gonna open up uh, 10 times for 3,000 here. So there's a quest here for 4,000 emeralds. Look at this. So we can get four. So this first one's free because you get 4,000 emeralds back. Resilience Insignia, Vibrant Agility Crystal. Ah, so these are like a higher level agility crystal. So you probably need those for higher level. Radiant Strength Crystals. Yeah, Tank for Primary Roll, Resilience Insignia. Greater Composure Insignia, those are Marksmen. Wisdom, that's Mage. Oh, there's some Intelligence Crystals. Didn't get a lot of those, but uh. So I got a, so that disappeared. Like, so we got a quest to go claim. Quest tab, look at this, 4,000 emeralds. So you should do that 3,000, I mean, especially like, so one tab, cause that's free, that's that uh, first one's free. And then of course I got a few more spending quests to do. So I could probably open up a couple more of those uh, before tomorrow, this before this ends, so we'll just hit that. But uh, the, there will be like this weekend or probably probably Sunday night, Monday, when Asgard, when Guild Raids are actually available, there will be an Asgard launch event. There will be a week long and those quests will be really good. So I definitely recommend saving the, some emeralds for that event. Um, there's some uh, weekly quests now. So let's see how see this tab to daily quest says daily quests, but there's also now weekly quests. So we got use of providence, astral providence five times. And that's an astral seer. So obviously we got that. So actually there's one time, three times, five times. So these just give you random crystals apparently. So random crystals, random vibrant crystal, random radiant crystal. Okay. I see. So there's like three tiers of crystals. Okay. So let's claim those. Level up tree of wisdom branch one time. Unlock ascension of glyphs in the ascension spire one time. Battle a guild raid boss one time. Can't do this quest. Wet. Um, so I probably might miss it on this week just because there's no guild raids this week. Battle boss maintenance guild raid three times. So these two we probably can't do this week, but I can definitely do these two here. That's not ascension aspire. I see these ones. Yeah, I see. You can't do it till next week. So these ones I will not get be able to finish this week, but we can do this one. I'm launching an ascension aspire here. Let's go to Aurora because we got oh this first one. Oh, we do not have. Oh, you can't get. I cannot do this one yet because I don't have a mana. Don't have mana. You could have to go to guild raid. So maybe I can't do this one yet. So let's do this one. Can we do this one? Actually, maybe I do get mana. I can get mana from that. Mage roll, Brant's tank roll. Let's do tank. Or I don't have stuff for this either. Don't have ancient wisdom crystals. Nope. Can't do those. Because you need wisdom crystals. When you start mana. So I actually can't do those quests either. So these quests I can't do right now. Um, but uh, so those ones like I said. But you could do those first three quests pretty easily with your freebie. So do those. Um, the only other change they did is like they removed the paid, there's the ascension themes here. There is no more paid pet patronage theme because they changed the whole patronage menu. I have a full video about that. Um, it's not all good because it's kind of buggy. It's not working correctly, but uh, you have to go through and set your defending team in every single mode. I actually did not do my, my grand right because you actually have these pets. Again, you're still limited to eight pets for your 15 heroes, so... This one, these times are not set up right, but um, you definitely want to do it for your guild war if you haven't yet. Um, but yeah, like I hate that they drop this in the middle of the guild week, in the middle of guild war, because it's 
That's a big change, and you kind of mess up the guild week because half the guild war week wasn't done with the new system. The new system, you cannot currently test with uh, with pets because they that patronage menu doesn't work in guild battles, so you can't use it for geek to test for guild war, so that's a problem. But uh, it is what it is. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video informative. Thank you for watching.